If this were a Hollywood film about the Bulls, obviously Jordan is the DiCaprio. He's the, he's the star. Scottie Pippen would be the co-star. Yes. But I think Sunday night's episodes focusing on, uh, on Rodman and on Phil, they're the stars without whom this film doesn't happen. And, and I think it's, it's fascinating to see the way Rodman is viewed, uh, especially through the prism of Phil, because it feels to me that Phil, and only Phil, could have handled this second incarnation of Rodman. You know them both so well. What did each find in the other? Well, I think what everybody has to realize, because if you watch this film, you probably wouldn't understand it. Dennis Rodman is an introvert. He really is. When he came into the league, he was a jeans and sneakers guy. No tattoos, no, no rings, very quiet. I remember being at an all-star game with him in 92. I'm in the hallway with him. They're announcing the players that are going to play in the game the next day, Rodman being one of them. They announce his name, Scott. Everybody starts booing. And he looks at me. He had tears in his eyes, and he's like, why don't they like me? Well, they don't like you because you're a bad boy. Chuck Daly loved him, put his around, arm around him and loved him. And he got Dennis Rodman to play the way he did for the Bulls, I mean, for the Pistons. Now, Daly leaves, Dennis Rodman goes off the rails, he comes to Chicago, here's a guy that might be as different as he is, as crazy as that may sound. Phil's kind of quirky, certainly different than your average NBA coach. He puts his arm around Dennis Rodman and says, I love you too. Let's make a deal. You can go to Vegas. I won't do anything as long as you come back and win for us. It was a match made in heaven. It really was. You know, it was, it's so, what's so great about the telling of the Las Vegas story, which <laughs> some of us had known, some of us had known Scott off the record for years and, 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 and couldn't tell it publicly, but Michael had right. to manage it along with Phil. I mean, so, so because look what happens when Rodman goes to Phil and says, I, I got to take a vacation. What does Phil do? He knew he was, he didn't go to Jerry Krause. He didn't go to Jerry Rice or he went to Michael. And they had to plot out what they were going to do. And of course, you heard Michael's skepticism. And in real time, it was just Michael did not believe that Rodman was going to just be back in the fold. You couldn't get him to believe that because they didn't know what a wild card, you, you knew he was a wild card, how much of a wild card. And when, he, when they got him back from Vegas, it's just, I mean, th 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 that story, seriously, suppose that happened today. Of course. Suppose you had a team, a major market <laughs> team with the stars of that level, and one dude just say, I'm going to Vegas. I'm going to Vegas for 48 hours. <laughs> yeah. Twitter would explode. It would come to an end. Yeah, well, that, that's a different way to manage your minutes and, and, and how much of a workload you're getting. But then, of course, they tell the story. He comes back and they play the game of Indian where you got to catch the guy and Rodman. They can't catch him for four laps. And really, I think that's the beauty and the genius of him is that he was wired differently. And yet, Michael, what he did for this team, only he could do. How do you, how do you view his importance to the, in the cog of that second run? Well, the, the fact that, you know, Scotty uttered a phrase, he said it was like hand in glove from the time he joined the team. And I don't think anybody expected that. You expected drama. You expected the drama you got in San Antonio with Dennis when he first started coloring his hair and being an extrovert, because Jackie's so right about him being to his true to personality an introvert. But he fit, he fit right away. Um, and so, especially once, once Scotty was back on the floor, and Dennis with that energy, and, and, and look, they had to replace Horace Grant. And I think Horace Grant is one of the overlooked people in the telling of this story about those Bulls teams. Horace Grant was a great fit and did some things that, to be honest, Dennis didn't do, wasn't going to do. Right. But they had to replace him. And Dennis Rodman could do so many things. Guard. I mean, Dennis Rodman was down in the low post against Shaq, and he had to be given away about 100 pounds. I mean, that's part of the assignment. He would take on anything, and the Bulls received a lot of that personality, and it helped evolve them from what they had been to what they were to become. We could do this for the whole hour, just like the episodes. They go by far too quickly. But, Jackie, if I could just give you the final thought and maybe, maybe with a look towards Phil, and if you can be as decorated as he's been and still be perhaps underappreciated, is, is that perhaps how you see part of him? You know, the thing about Phil is he's just disarming. And I mean that in the most positive way. And that's why he connects with people. Because you think, he, you think there's going to be some kind of ceremony? No. He just says whatever he's thinking. He says whatever he means to say. He puts his arm around you and says, okay, this is what we're going to do. 
and guys buy into it. I remember Shaq telling me once with the Native American stuff and the Zen, he's lying down in the Zen, and he said, Phil, it's not working. I fell asleep. And, and, and Phil said to him, well, Shaq, that's because you're tired. You know? He just knows how to connect with players. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.